Good afternoon and a huge warm welcome to Carnation Crafts. We are live in the Carnation Crafts studio. It's USB time. It's one of my favorites. I love the USB shows. I love working with USBs. They make crafting just an absolute joy to work with. This is Carnation's newest USB. This is Love and Light. And it's got three different uh, collections on there. So we've got Coastal Currents, Lots of Love and In the Courtyard. And we've got extra card shapes as well, which you cannot get in die form, which makes it even more exciting. And at the end of today's show, I will do a full card demo with one of those card shapes. So you can see it coming together. It is a joy to work with. It, honestly, if you love USBs, this is so pretty, so lovely, and so many ways of playing with it. We're gonna do the boards first, because they're pretty massive, and I'm boxed in. <laughs> I'm boxed in with boards, Miss Taz. Miss Taz has got a microphone on, so you can all actually hear her, which some of you have asked for in the past, but she's gonna forget to turn it on, and that's fine too. So we'll just let her work out what she needs to do. You okay, Miss Taz? Are you gonna try? Yes. Are you going to say hello to the people? Hello, everybody. It, it sounds weird hearing my own voice in my head, if that makes sense. It does. They might not be able to hear you. You know when you have to sort of tell your children to dance on stage and you're like, go on then. That's what we do. So we're going to do the boards first. So this board is lots of love and it's got all of your really beautiful florals on it. Now, this is the best way we've got of showing you everything that's on here because the boards are quite lofty and large but you have got some seriously beautiful stuff here the gorgeous reeds coming through here i can't see the names of the dies from below so i do apologize you've got the uh, pointed poppies here i love this and i will hopefully have chance to work with you a little bit with a couple of these we've also got over here your bountiful berries these are all your tuck-ins really important for card making tuck-ins they make an enormous difference to everything that we're making because it gives you a visual point we can create corners we can create l's super super pretty you've got the hanging heart wreath there which has got little rings on it so you can actually get them to hang which is really really exciting um, you've got your gorgeous tiny flutter hummingbird more importantly, for me, you are lots of love floral light work. I love carnations light work. It's really important. They're so beautiful for backgrounds and they create so much dimension. It's really, really beautiful. What are you laughing at, Miss Tiztaz? I can hear you giggling. It's just how slow this is going. Is it going very slow on the board? Bless you. You've also got your beautiful bow there as well, your netted bow. All of this coming on the USB. That is one collection. That's lots of love. Miss Taz, I'm going to need you to grab this board. Excuse me, people at home. Thanks, lovely. So we move on from there and we move to In the Courtyard, which is, as we know, just one of those gorgeous collections. In the Courtyard, if you remember, is the one with the card shape that folds into itself and it has the well. Can you remember the well that we raised? It's got all of those aspects in it on the USB as well, but plus your gorgeous petite frames as well sitting in there. So we get this insane set of dies or vignettes let's put it that way so there's your petite oval frame which is just absolutely stunning your diamond and also your rectangle the filigree on this is just phenomenal and remember you can resize everything to whatever you need it to be you've got your balcony there which is like your romeo and juliet balcony you've got all of your garden grandeur your cypress trees you've got your gorgeous waterfall there as well all of this from in the courtyard obviously you've got your posing peacock beautiful absolutely stunning you've got lasting light that gorgeous hang down and then you've got the beautiful beautiful card shape which is just absolutely stunning one of my favorite card shapes really because we've got so many variants with it and it is so entirely pretty and again we can resize so it can be as long as you want or as small as you want thanks miss taz she is good to me she does look after me one of my favorite collections, and I love this collection so much, is Coastal Currents because it is just beyond beautiful. Those kind of subdued coastal colors that Carnation have used to just bring it together. One of my favorite dies is here, which is your land locked, uh, sorry, land loved corners. And I love that so much. It's such an important corner element, but so too is the netting above it. 
You've also got here your woven card shape, beautiful for doing little apertures and having this as a netting over the top, really pretty. It's your day. You've got your corners. We work downwards and you've got your beautiful sunflower here, which is just extraordinary. And remember, you can have that as a 12 by 12. So start to think about where we can take it outside of card making. Marine friends down the bottom, you've got your seal, which Miss Taz was getting all excited about just before we came on air. He has got rolls, Miss Tis, not <laughs> like myself. We've got a crab, you've got the large bird, you've got the small bird, everything coming together, really beautiful. Love, love, love the Vespa motorbike. It's so cute, it's so sweet, and it's got all of that feeling of holiday, hasn't it? It really does come together. This is an absolute corker because that gives us an, a beautiful background, that gorgeous sunset coming through. You've also got your, um, what's you call it, Miss Tis Taz? promenade uh, and you've got your sand dunes you've got your water line so you can create real scenes from this uh, and then we go across you've got full sail down here which are your two boats so you've got the small yacht and the large yacht we go across you've got your washed ashore all of your gorgeous shells now obviously the color is a little brighter than they are in real life on the cameras just purely because of the lighting but as you see it in demo it will look more of its original color scale from here you've got up to the lighthouse Again, one of my favorites, the tuck-ins you can do behind here and just work things in. It's so pretty. By the beachfront, so you've got your gorgeous beach hut, which I love in those blues and whites, those coastal tones, your railings, your lamp, uh, and your sign. And I'll be working with those today along with the beach chairs and blankets as well. And that's everything from the three collections. Everything, like they literally put everything in, but there is one more set of boards. And that is for the card shapes. And they're so pretty. And they are completely different to anything we've seen because you cannot get them on a die form. So we've got the Garden Borders card shape. And this is the one, Ale. This is the one that I am going to be working with later. And that, so I'll show you how that comes together. Uh, and we'll see it coming through. We've then got your gorgeous arrow card shape here which folds inwards and upwards as you can see so you get that beautiful height and dimension to it and then we have got your beautiful lotus envelope card shape which as you see has got your little um mats and layers on the inside of it and all we do is fold those through bring it all together and twist and that is your little envelope card shapes done but you've also got the larger one as well but remember you can resize it you can do whatever you want with a usb because you are completely in control thanks miss tittas so now that we've seen all the imagery on there what does that um, what does it amount to well first of all let's have a look at the usb you're going to be getting it uh, from the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. When you buy this today at $49.99, plus you're going to get, uh, obviously, the $2.95 P and P. However, remember, if you then add extra things into your basket today and you spend over 75 quid, £10 is going to be uh, put back into your account. So to me, if you're buying this today, it really is worth chucking in some pro print, some glue, something that takes you over that point to get £10 back. It's worth it, right? Um, this is 230722 Love and Light USB with a free Elevate taster pack. Elevate is my favourite thing ever and I really love it and it smells really nice. If you get this, you get four sheets, two of the 1.5 mil, two of the two mil. So you get to play around with different heights and shapes. This works amazingly well, not only in your Scan and Cut or in your Cricut, but it also works amazingly well in your um, die cutting machines as well. So you can use it for both. I'm just trying to find the YouTubes. There we go. I've got the comments there. Right, so we're going to have a look at cutting some stuff out. What does it actually look like when it's printed? Well, <laughs> it looks like that. Like a whole wad. Backing papers. Look at all of these. I believe there's, is it 244 free backing papers somewhere? Look at those. Aren't they gorgeous, Miss Taz? All of your sunsets sitting there, just really pretty. So we can create really gorgeous shapes. Imagine, uh, you know, the large sort of eight by eights with one of those sitting in the middle, just that gorgeous line. Your little beach chairs sitting at the front raised up on elevate or foam tape to give perspective so that it looks like people are sitting out. Remember, on those little beach chairs, you've got a couple holding hands. You just see the hands held. 
got loads of backing papers for you here. Uh, look at these. Look at the vibrancy in these. Aren't they beautiful? Whole library of backing papers. That to me is incredible. But then we start to get into the actual artwork and it's stunning. Again, Pro Print being your best friend. Look at that. Just incredible, right? The colours, the vibrancy, the love that's gone into making these is something else. They're just so pretty. Really gorgeous, right? Now you can see as I'm going through, for those of you who are brand new to USB shows, we've got the DC, which is detail cut. And that means things like where you've got each line coming through here for the bricks, each one of those will be cut with individual cut lines going through. So you can bend it, shape it, mold it, do all the different things. But if we go to a speed cut, which will be further down the line, it would just cut literally the outline of it. I'm gonna show you that onto, on the USB, but I just wanted you to have a look at these in all of their glory, because you can see them a little more clear, clearly this way. Aren't they stunning? This is for all from in the courtyard. I love that so much. That archway, that archway is not just for. What was the show we did? Hold on, hold on. Had a butterfly catcher. And it had the archway with the brick wall. Oh, I know. Oh, let me have a look. Let have me a have look. a little look, see. I know what they're Had the, the butterfly catcher. But yeah. it, wouldn't that be beautiful for, for the archway for that door to create into that field going beyond? It's on the tip of my tongue and I can't place it. Look at these. So pretty. Let me just answer some of your questions. Sorry. Suzanne, hi, Carla, Mr. Taz. Does the printout that are on the board, is that the size they come out before resizing? Yes. Yeah, so the ones I've got here... These are the size they all come out, which is the same as the board. I have to say the boards make them look bigger because the boards are so big. Um, whereas in reality, they come out, they're not too different from the size of the dies, but there is a difference. I couldn't put the die of this on top of here and cut it. It would be different because we've got a size slightly different because of uh, the cut lines. Yes, Miss Tiztaz. Uh, I've just had a message. So everyone's aware of the spend £75, get... Ten pounds. Beauty beyond. Back Thank you, Vera. Until Monday. Yeah. If anyone is charged for duplicate orders, please just email customer services, and they will promptly fix it. Oh, I fantastic! Did you have yourself on microphone when you said that? I did. did I'm learning. You? Are you learning? Thank you. So hopefully everyone at home can hear Miss Taz. If you can't, can you let me know? We've got. The, I love this. So that will be the size. Now the other question, Beauty Beyond Vera, you're just such a legend. Thank you. Um, Vera is one of our incredibly talented DT members. Vera, she says, I've been thinking about getting a scan and cut for quite a while now. Is it really as easy as you make it look? Yeah. Is it really difficult on some other ones? Yeah. I would always go for a scan and cut. I'm not gonna lie. I can say that on here. I'm allowed to say it in this room. That's the one I would go for if I was choosing a cut image. I can't say that on air in other places, but I will say it here. Gorgeous. Look at this. So Vera, we'll go through a full demonstration for you. Uh, Karen Vincent says, we can hear Miss Tiz Taz and it's brilliant to hear her now. I think it will help out during the shows for you to be able to hear as messages and stuff are coming through. So Taz can tell you uh, straight away herself. If I can just point out the colour in here and when we look, think about the colour wheel and the fact that you've got your beautiful oppositions going on here. So that cacophony of colour is just so vibrant and so beautiful. And if you think of these as being corner panels or separate individual florals, these will be your decoupage elements, four cards coming through. Imagine where you're going with that. Take your imagination just to, you know, to the moon and back. Look at these with the little hands holding between the two deck chairs. So cute, could be anybody, doesn't have an age, it's just perfect. Love, love, love the cypress trees from in the courtyard. And the last few that we've got here, you've got in the lighthouse, all of the different, oh, look at that. Love, love, love that. We'll cut one of those, I think. They're one of my favourites. And then we've got your posing peacock, just sitting there, really cute. So these are, these are the ones that will be the easiest for me to cut. I've taken both of them as speed cuts. If there are some other ones uh, which have, oh, actually, like this one on top. Sorry, Mr. Taz, can I borrow the overhead one more time? DCSC, detail cut, speed cut. So if I'm saying to you on some of them, they're going to say DC and on other ones, they're going to say C, say SC. What does it mean when it says both? Well, it means that you can choose. 
it, it, you can just choose. So if you want it to be a speed cut, so you don't want all the detail on it, it's gonna be a background piece, you're not worried about it, that would be your speed cut. If you're gonna have it as a showstopper at the front of your card, if this is gonna be the thing that everybody is looking at when they get the card, then you really wanna go in for the detail on the front of those. So anything that you're pushing forward, I would suggest detail cut. Anything that's gonna sit in the background, I would suggest your speed cut, just to save you a bit of time, really. Now, one of the things that we very, very rarely advertise with Carnation, um, and we don't talk about a lot, and it's a shame, because actually, I'll go out on a limb and say it's one of my it's one of my top top tips is there 12 by 12 cardstock and we don't talk about it much because we talk about the 350 because it's great for card bases but their their 12 by 12 is 300 gsm so it's really strong cuts really beautifully through the scan and cut and the reason that i love it so much because you can use your 350 no problem i'm not saying that but because it's exactly the same size as the mat it doesn't matter what I throw it as far as a card base is concerned because some of the card bases are bigger than A4. They're wider than A4. So it doesn't matter what I throw out. It's just taking care of it every single time. So if you are hoping to get to your £75 or over today on the Carnation Craft website and you're thinking, well, I'll go for the USB, have a go with the 12 by 12 It is a really beautiful card stock and it's something that I think we probably should sing the praises of more. We just don't get to use it all the time because generally speaking, I'm using a 350 on the A4. So I'll get a clean sheet. First of all, we're gonna cut a card shape and then I'm just to show you how to use it. So Vera, this is where I will show you how easy it is because I promise you it is. Listen, I couldn't make something look easy if it wasn't. I can tell you that much because if anyone is gonna get into a model, Miss Taz will tell you it will be me. Not saying that won't happen, but. Let's have a look. We're gonna have a look at some finished samples and I'm just gonna do this, pop this onto here. Right, let's have a look at some of the stuff that you're gonna be making. Look at that. If that doesn't fill your heart with joy, I don't know what I would. Just awesome. Suzanne Page, I would go for a scan and cut. It's brilliant and easy to use. It really is easy. It's really easy. Would I want to go on air and try and demonstrate the other one? Do they scare me? You don't need a computer with the scan and cut. I don't need to do anything technological with a scan and cut because it's just that and I just plug the USB into the side and everything is on my screen here. I can use a computer if I want to get technical. That's that's an option. Do I want to? No. Can I do everything I need to do right there? Yes. So here we go. You've got your beautiful wooden element on here where the just beautiful um, sort of driftwood being put together just to make this scene. This is the beautiful Tracy Moore. Thank you, Tracy. It's absolutely stunning. We have a different DT team for the um, USBs and they do not get nearly enough shout out. So let's make sure where well, we can, that's Lindsay Atherton, that they are getting their names recognized for the fantastic work they've done with this USB. That is stunning your petite uh, love heart frame sitting in the middle of that with those gorgeous backing papers beautiful and very very easy to make these are not difficult cards uh, and that's not to detract from them but you can't make a bad card with carnation and they all come together so this one is fiona rabbit what i'll say about this is if i was to come to wear with this and um and say to you, you know, this this is what I've got, la 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 la. You wouldn't for one second sit there and go, that's a scan and cut. You know, you wouldn't necessarily think that. You'd think that was a die cut. Because Carnation give you everything as good as it can ever get. That's what Carnation do. And that to me, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at that and automatically go, oh well, that is definitely, you know, a die cut. So it's just about working out the differences. Again, same thing. I wouldn't sit and say that was scan and cut, but it is. Beautiful, right? The ways we play. Coastal currents. Gorgeous cards. Stunning, stunning. I'm going to fall off my chair if I go much further. Look at these. And I'll just do this as a final one because I am going to fall over. Look at that. Isn't that just glorious? Thank you for being my sunshine. That's what I would say to you, Miss Tiz Taz. Thank you for being my sunshine. Isn't that just beautiful? Don't be, don't be afraid of trying a cutting machine 
uh, over dies because they're not the same thing and we play differently, we get different ideas, but also added to that, we can do more with a scan and cut than we can with a die. That's, I don't mean to detract from dies when I get very excited about USBs, but the shift in capability is just extraordinary because it can be as big as it wants to be. It can be smaller. We can do bespoke card shapes and they're really easy. And what I would say to Vera or to anyone else who's sitting on the fence, do I want to do it? No, I want to do it. These should, because Carnation now have their own TV channel, any of the USB shows that we do here can be rewatched whenever you want. But also because Hobbymaker keep all of their shows on YouTube, you just go to Hobbymaker's uh, show, any of the shows that I did on there can be rewatched forever. So you can always have a backup for learning. So I've got my USB and I've got it sitting inside my machine. It just slots inside, it's just a little hole. And to, this is a brand new map. This is gonna cause me more problems. That wasn't quite ASMR, was it? Sorry, dudes. So, brand new map, strong advice. Just let me get rid of my cutting board. Pop that. If you hear a loud crash, you know what it is. Sorry, guys. Sleeve. If it's brand new, you're gonna get stuff stuck to it that you don't want to, and your paper will just tear. So dampen it down with your sleeve or with a cloth. That's gonna help you enormously. So I'm gonna put my 12 by 12 on here. We're gonna cut a card shape. And it just sits down, okay? No problem with that at all. I'm gonna make sure that my scan and cut is turned on and it will go to sleep. If you don't use it for any length of time, it will just go to sleep. And you just have to press the button again. Can you all see the screen? Do I need to turn it slightly towards you? Will that help? Is that better, Miss Taz? So if I go to home, it's going to say the first thing, the carriage is gonna to move to the initial position. Keep your paws away from it. You don't want to get cut. So you say, okay, and it just shifts. I mean, it has quite, quite the over egging of the pudding for the danger warning, because literally it just shunts. So don't worry about that. Now I've got options here, patterns, scans, retrieve data. Retrieve data is where I'm going. And then I'm gonna select the USB icon. If there's anything that I'm saying as I'm going through the tutorial or the, the demo, and you think I didn't get that, I don't understand, tell me, because I can only know what you don't know, if that makes sense, tell me, um, and I will go back. So this says SVGs and vignettes. SVGs, what is an SVG? It is a scalable vector graphic, meaning that it is a series of lines that never changes. So if I pull it and pull it and pull it, I can make it as big as I want to be. A JPEG, which is a photograph, is full of pixels. Why are you looking at me? I've been a producer for craft for nearly eight years. I never knew what SVG stood for. Oh, did you know it's a scalable vector yeah. graphic? A JPEG is a photograph that is full of pixels, little tiny squares. And when we, when we try and make that bigger, it'll become pixelated. And we see that a lot with photographs. So the reason that we use an SVG is it's a scalable vector graphic. It means I can enlarge it and without any interference from it. And that's why, that's why we can make bigger card bases, those kind of things. So we're gonna go to SVGs and vignettes, and we're just gonna click in here. And I've got different things here, different folders. Each, so Cypress Tree, we looked at those, didn't we, uh, a, a few seconds ago. And there it is, the Cypress Tree, I can go through. There is a menu that you can print for the whole of the USB, which will show you everything that's on there. Sharon also saying, I didn't know what an SVG stood for, just that it was a cutting file. <laughs> it's a scalable vector graphic. That's how sad my life is. Um, I used to design them at one point when I used to design fonts. That's the only reason I know. So if I just go down here, I've got full sail, hanging wreath. I've got all the different pieces going through with all the different um, things that it says. So here where it says garden borders card shape, that's one of the free ones and that's one of the ones we're working with today. So I will in fact cut one piece of that just so you can see it. So I'm going to just tap it. It's gonna retrieve 
there's all my information. Now there's four SVGs on there, that's because we've got your card base and then we've got your mats and your layers and everything in between. So I'll select a random one and that's got two archways on it, okay? So not too much to think about there, but if I go back and select a different one, it'll have a different image, okay? And that's just because the different layers are doing different things. So I hope that makes sense. Tell me if I'm not making sense. Tell me if I'm going too fast. So I'm gonna pop my mat onto my little tray here. And there's, oh, you won't be able to see it, but there are two ridges. What are you wanting me to move, Taz? See, she didn't put herself on the microphone when she's shouting at me, does she? Oh, I can if you want. Just saying. There's two ridges on your scan and cut, two little bump lines, and what we do is make sure our mat is between them, and we butt it up to the metal bar that runs across. That metal bar is going to make sure nothing goes in that shouldn't. I'm going to press the chessboard button that is on the top. The chessboard, remember, that means that we're ready to play. We're ready to play chess. It's going to go in. It's going to feed my mat and then it's going to read the data on the mat and then it's gonna spit it out, okay? And that's all I need to worry about. At that point, it's ready to do what I need it to do. It's ready to cut. So I'm gonna go, okay. And then I'm just gonna keep pressing okay. Okay, I'm gonna press please select. Do you want to cut it or do you want to draw it? Because you can put pens in your scan and cut. I want to cut it. Drawing it won't do me anything. And it says, okay, we're ready. Let's go. Now what happens with the SDX machines, so you can see it says SDX 1200, with these machines it's got an auto blade. So it tests my paper depth here. Just make sure that it's gonna cut and not cut through my mat. And believe me, that is a lifesaver because I have cut through so many mats, it's unreal. So it's processing everything and it says it's gonna take three minutes to cut, which is absolutely fine. I'll probably pause it halfway through because I don't actually need it to cut it, I've already cut it. But I wanted to be able to show you it in motion and how it's working. Now, Vera, if you're still watching, you're a good one to be able to tell me at this point whether or not what I'm saying is making sense to you. Because if you can turn around and go, I can do that, I can do that because that's how I learned with this, because I did not want to use the scanning cut. I was dead against it until they forced me to use it, <coughs> which sounds worse than it is. And, um, and I love it now, and I really do love it, and I love the fact that I can use Carnation with it, because Carnation obviously is one of my biggest passions, and then to be able to use that on a USB as well is just mind-blowing to me. It's obviously um, a more economical way of doing things, but to me it's the power of it. Right, I think that's cut the main section of it. Just let it do this round and then I'm going to pause it because I think it's going to try and cut it twice because it's on a thick cardstock. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to pause it. So I'm going to press quick cut in. Obviously, if you're at home, you wouldn't do that. It's going to spit the mat. And let's hope it's actually cut. And then press your chessboard and it'll spit it out. Okay, so now that I've got this, See, it cut through it like a dream. It didn't need to go through twice. There's my card base. That's how hard it is, Vera. That's how difficult it is. She's pressed three buttons and it does a card base. It's super clever. And this already has a perforation in it, so I can just fold that over. That is already scored and ready for me to use. And there's a beautiful aperture card base. Not difficult. It's really not hard. It's, it's, it's the daunting process. That's the problem with a USB, is that everyone goes, I can't use a cutting machine. Anyone can use a cutting machine. I didn't know how to use a mobile phone. I bought an air fryer the other day and I didn't know how to use that. Am I now cooking full meals in it? Yes, I am, because it's not difficult once we start, but the starting is the process where we go, Ooh. But Carnation are here, the, the, these tutorials are here and Carnation bring out USBs, you know, every, is it every month now? every couple of months but the point being is you'll always have that handhold these videos will always be on youtube for you to use at home and it means you can start getting into the idea of crafting with usbs svgs they're just so easy um right so what we're going to do is um Vera says, I think I would watch your demo as I was trying but straight seems straightforward and I think that's the point isn't it it's 
It's just about following it. Now, the joy that we've got in this studio over anywhere else is I know that Mrs. Taz is going to follow exactly what I'm doing. So you actually get a full screenshot of it. So the next thing we're going to do is cut a vignette because this is slightly different. And we're going in here at beginning. So we're starting at the very beginning. I'll go for the posing peacock and I'm doing the speed cut. It works the same whether you're doing a detail cut or a speed cut. Don't be foiled. It's exactly the same process. It's just with we it's outlining that one of them is going to be a simple cut. It's just going to be the outline and the other is going to be much more detailed. So we get it on to the board here. Mary Lynette, can you use the Cricut as well? Do I know how? No. Can you use a silhouette? Yes. Do I know how? No. I'm trying to learn, uh, but time is not my best friend at the minute. Um, and you absolutely can. And we've got customers that use the Cricut for it all the time. I don't know how to do it with this. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend I do because I think that's really unfair. Uh, but those people who know the Cricut know how to do all of the things. I'm trying to learn. I promise. And I will learn. Oh, let's just put this into here. So in between the two bars, I need to get this to go home. This has to go to its home base. So I'm going to press the home button. It's going to say, do you want to delete everything? And you do, even though it sounds frightening, you do want to delete it because it's just deleting what's on the board. So I'm going to press OK and then I'm going to press retrieve data again, USB. And I know I'm looking for my posing peacocks. SVGs and vignettes, you are always going into that folder. The other one that says papers, ignore. That's your backing papers. You're not going to be using those on here. You only ever need that one folder on this machine. So from here, I am going to scroll down. Inside all of these folders, you will, there's posing peacocks. When I've got it on here, this is an interesting point, or it is to me. When I've got this on here, you see how there's three SVGs sitting there. If I put this same USB into my computer, it wouldn't just have those three folders. It would also have PDFs in it because that's my vignette. That's what I'm printing. So the idea is you put the USB into your computer first, drag and drop that information so it remains on your computer. And then you can just use the USB for this. So there you go. Detail cut. There's your mats. That's your card base. And then there is your speed cut. So here we go. Speed cut. I'm going to show you the whole process, but I probably won't cut all three because it's once you've seen it going, you've seen it going, right? It's a speed cut. We'll, we'll do one. So I'm going to press OK. I'm not going to do anything technical or anything fancy with this. I'm literally going to cut it as if I was cutting it at home. Those are the three peacocks and they're exactly the same as the vignette that I've still sitting on my scan and cut. So I know I'm all good. I need to press my chessboard. So I'm going to press that. That's remember, it's time to go when it's time to play. Press our chessboard when it's time to play. That takes my mat in, reads it and spits it out. Now I need to get that image that's there to match up to the image that's on my mat. And so the way I do that is to simply press my oven door. If I press my oven door, I'm cooking my mat. I'm taking a photo. I'm, it's the only way I can remember the things. So if I press the oven door, I'm cooking it. I'm toasting it. And so if I press that, press start, it's just going to take this through. Like, remember, the toaster's in a hotel. It's going to take it through like a hotel toaster. It's going to butt up against my wall. The joy of having small spaces. It's going to come out. And on my machine, you're now going to see a photo of my mat. OK, and that is an exact photo of my mat. But those vignettes that were there are still there. You know, the SVGs that were originally there. Sorry, the little black and white outlines are still on my screen. I've just got to find them. So all I do is press onto my screen and a red bounding box comes up. You can see the red bounding box there. I can move that, but if I do, it will only move the bounding box. I need it to move the peacocks. I need it to move everything. So in order to make that happen, we have to make them have a party together. So if I go to edit and I go to my red party box of joy, and then I'm gonna make them all dance together. So this here where it says, let's be partners, we're going to get them to be dance partners. That's gonna select everything that's on my mat, okay? So then I can press okay. And then I can press my 
uh, magnifying glass so I can get closer. And I'm going to press this one as well so you can see it really, really close up. Can you see where my red line is not meeting my black line? They're not quite right. And that's because I need to move some stuff. I need to just shunt it. And that's okay. We use these buttons for them here. And I can move them up. I can move them down. And there you go. I think I've got it about right now. There we go. That's about perfect. So this thick red line is sitting on my thick black line. That means I've got them lined up. Everything is where it needs to be. I don't really have to worry about anything else. So then I can press OK. And I can press OK again and OK again. So now we're on the same process that we were before, but now my photos disappeared and I've just got my SVGs again because it knows where it needs to cut them on this piece of paper. We know it knows because we lined them up. So the image that it's got on here is exact to what that is. So then I press, please select, cut, start, and off it goes. That's it. I mean, that is literally as difficult as it gets. The, the scanner cut is super easy to use and it, you know, the fact that it's got this extra visual where it's got the scanning bed on it is, it is so incredibly important and easy for those of us who like to craft because we get these really beautiful images from Carnation, the artwork we used to, but we get to cut it in our own way and it's doing what it's doing. It didn't take long, did it? And it would be the same if it was a detail cut. The difference is if I was doing a detail cut, it would take longer to cut out because it's putting all of that detail in. Um, 12 Steps to Beauty says, help please Carla, I have zillions of die collections of Carnation crafts and years of collecting others. Yeah, I'm doing, am I doing the right thing getting a scan and cut? So what I'll say to you 12 Steps to Beauty is, as I say all the time, if you were to, if you were a massive knitter fan, you love knitting jumpers, would you then say that it's completely pointless you learn into crochet? And actually in some ways that's a bad analogy because you can do so much more with a scan and cut. You'll net, listen, if you decided never to cut a USB on your scan and cut and you decided to do something else with it, you're never gonna not have a use for a scan and cut. This is not me, I'm not selling a scan and cut here, we don't have them. Um, but a scan and cut will cut three millimeter chipboard, it will cut three millimeter aluminium, it'll do leather, it'll do embossing, it will do foiling, you name it, it's going to do all of these things. And so I think part of the problem, this is just me chewing the fat in my head really, I think when we when we do shows like this people think oh well it's either dies or it's a cutting machine, but it's not. Dies are in and of themselves incredible tools. They're incredible. And you don't get the same finish on the scanner cut. You don't. There's no two ways around it. You don't. But you get a different scope with the scanner cut to do so many other things. So is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. It's one of the best things I've ever owned. And I'm not selling you it here. I don't have one to sell. But I have got three scanning cuts because I love them. I love them. I genuinely think it's a game changer. Seriously, as far down to take some of Carnation's numbers, some of the beautiful fonts they choose, you know, for numbers and stuff, that just your chessboard to release it. Then think about cutting that in vinyl and putting it on your wheelie bins. It's not about making cards all the time. It's about everything else that we can do. And suddenly everything we've got for Carnation can become a home decor project. It can become a construction project. Everything, it changes the game. It's incredible. So would I say it's worth it? Yeah, 100%, 100%. I've never regretted owning one and, and then went on to buy two more. So you can see my peacocks here just release. If you're ever having trouble releasing, I won't be able to do it too much because of my large tummy, but if you put this here and you roll it down a table, it will release all of your pieces from your board without any problems. And same again, just roll. See how it lifts up? Peel, pull, get your little pieces off. And that, my friends, is how you cut a carnation vignette. And Look at what we've got. Hold on, there you go, look at that. Isn't she beautiful? 
Isn't she just extraordinarily beautiful? Really pretty. There's, a, there's something about carnation. There is something about carnation, about everything they do. You know, you know the quality of the dies with them. You know that. And the USB is no different. But they also give you extras. So on the USB, you're getting card shapes you cannot buy on die. We can only get them. So we get people who collect the USBs because of that, understandably, because it's card shape. We know they're going to be nice card shapes. It's carnation. Um, makes sense. So do I think it's worth it? Yes. Would I try and sell you one? No. Um, it's, I don't mean this to be rude at all. It matters not to me whether you own one or you don't. I'm not getting any money from selling it to you. Do I think it's worth it? Yes, I do. I hope that helps. So, I, and I hope it didn't sound rude because it wasn't meant to, to be. Right, let me see if I can try and re retrieve my glass cutting mat. I did not break it, Carnation. No, I did not. It's very hard to break that mat. It's, which is why they gave it to me. <laughs> the one thing Carnation were happy to hand over to me. Carla, you can use this mat. So I do want to get a card done for you from this collection because um, now that you've seen how it cuts, now that you've seen what it does, let's have a look at how it all comes together. And there's so many way, different ways of playing with this one card shape. Miss Taz, can I give you those just so they're not... Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So... Let's talk about layers, foam... So what I want you to do here is suspend your imagination for a minute. Don't think about whether this is a USB and don't think about whether this is a die. Don't think about anything. It is the USB. It is an SVG. But just look at the card. So if we can stop trying to work out all the time, well, is it a die? Is it this? Is it not? And just take it on the value of what does this look like at the end? How, how pretty is it? How beautiful is it? Would I want it? Would I want to give it to somebody? That's all that matters, right? It's That's the thing. Um, it's Debbie Anderson says, do you not get the same detail on the vignette once it's cut on the scan and cut as you do on the dies? I have a scan and cut, but hardly use it as I buy the dies all the time. Um, so you don't get the same because what happens with a die, a die is a piece of metal that has got sort of shapes inside it, as we know. And those shapes compress onto the paper and it um, indents the paper in different places. And that indent gives you that beveling. So that's what gives it those cut lines. The, and, and obviously Carnation take that to the best quality. So we get even more of that dimension with Carnation. We're used to seeing it. We're visually used to seeing it. The scan and cut can't do that. It's got no compression point to it. No cutting machine can, not just the scan and cut. It can only cut lines. So this is why the vignettes are not the same. What they've got is cut line detail to them. Now that being said, if you take one and it's not as, let me see what I've got here that I can show you. The thing is, they just look, they look good to me. If I take this little bird, hey, there we go. Can you see? The problem is, we want it to be identical to a die and it's not. They're not the same thing. I don't think there is anything missing from that. And the reason I don't think that is the quality of Carnation's artwork stands for itself. The fact that we get the compression lines with, uh, with the, um, the dies is an added bonus, definitely. But it stands for itself, right? It's beautiful. It's, it's already visually pleasing. So do I think it matters? Not as much. If you've got a detail cut, you can sculpt. So you still get that. And if you do sculpt it, you'll get a better finish on it. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that's, that's where we want to be, really. So it's not the same, but it is, in my opinion, no less worthy. Um, Alison says, will Carnation start selling scan and cut in the future as they sell USBs? Never say never. Um, certainly, I don't believe they've got intention at the minute. Um, Shelley Goldring, sorry if this has been asked, but can they be double-sided? Shelley, it's a yes and a no question, to be fair. Yes, you can. Is it long-winded? Yes. Is it worth it? No is the simple answer. You would have to be, get a program on your computer which allows you to flip the vignette so that it is in reverse. So you would print it the right side, then you would flip it and you would print it reversed. You would then cut them separately and then you would have to glue them together. So yes, it can be done. Um, 
Is it a really long process? Yes. Is it worth it? Well, actually, it depends what you were doing with the card and who it was for. If you've got a full afternoon to do all of that, yeah, of course it's worth it. Everything's worth the effort, right? But if I was making batch cards, I just wouldn't go there. But yeah, it can absolutely be done. Um, we did it on a show. Um, I can't remember when though, but we did do it a while ago. What weight of card do you print on for USBs? Really good question. So um, if I was doing a vignette, if whenever I'm doing, de and I'm always honest about this, whenever I'm doing demos with the USB, I will always print it on 120. And the reason I do that is it because it cuts quicker. Um, so I'm not keeping you guys waiting for so long because it's the same process. Um, see how when I cut the card shape the first time, yep, I said, I think it's gonna try and cut that twice because of the weight of the card stock. That's the problem. It'll just keep cutting it until it gets through. So the heavier the use, it'll just kick. So demo, we don't have time. If I was doing it myself, I'd do it on a 220 uh, Pro Print because I would want to have the, the, the stable, the solid piece. And certainly for anything that I was doing as the showstopper, the piece at the front, the showstopper, the thing that's gonna stand out the most, that I would most certainly do on a 220 and I would do it on a detail cut. So I hope that helps. That's what I would do. Um, Alison says, could you not flip it to reverse on the scan and cut? Yeah, you can flip the image on the scan and cut, no problem, but you can't, it won't flip the printed image because the printed image is what's sitting on the mat that's getting cut. So you'd have to flip that on your printer. You've got to be able to flip it and print it reverse so that you can reverse it on your scan and cut. So it can be done, it's just, you know, one of those things. Um, so, right, let's go in and make a card. So I'm not keeping you all too long. I do apologize, you've probably had enough of me already. So I've got layers for this one. I want to work in layers. I want to work in one of my favorite joyful things, which is layers. So I've cut out this card shape that we were cutting out before, and it's just beautiful. And you can see that I've got foam tape on the outside. I've also uh, left the back piece open so that I can use it as a normal card base. So nothing weird yet, right? All except other than the fact that my foam is on the outside of the card, everything about that is as it should be. But then I've got another card base. This one, is your main card base. It hasn't got anything on the back of it, if you see what I mean. There's nothing, you know, it's not cut out. This one, however, is a full aperture. So now what I'm doing is creating layers, oodles and oodles of layers. And that's gonna allow me to construct. I'm then gonna do the same with my mat and the same with my layers. And I've purposely stuck white on white because it's just beautiful to look at isn't it white on white and you see the depth of shadow that I get from that that is so extraordinarily pretty we are literally walking into a stage it's beautiful so we're going to play with those layers the first thing I'm going to do is stick this one together on the inside and just peel these away you wouldn't need the two pieces. I was trying to add just a little bit of height, but not too much by placing them in. If I can grab a hold. And I'm just gonna fold those in, piecing those together. And that's just gonna give me a little bit more depth. You can see the shadow that's coming through here, all right? You've got that little bit of playway. And then I'm gonna stick this onto here. So I've got my next layer of foam tape, but now I get to make choices. I'm gonna be stacking things in layers. I'm gonna be stacking my die cuts, if you like, not die cuts, but you know what I mean, my SVG pieces in layers. Look at that. Isn't that just so gorgeous? Really beautiful. So I'm just gonna place that in and that's gonna sit at the back. Pretty already, right? really pretty already. So I'm gonna do that first before I go any further. Shelley, with the pro print paper, I'm having trouble working out the right side with my new pack of paper, which side to print on. Yeah, when you first take it out of the box, the thing is this only works for when you first take it out of the box, I'll tell you a different way. 
but it, it's got literally you pull it out of the box and it arches just ever so slightly it's just where the paper sort of domes and the bit that's on top the top dome this bit that's the printing side the underside here that's the rough side you can feel the difference if you're canny you can sit and you can work it out but i cannot work out the difference on a 170. i can on a 220 and i can on a 120. i can't on a 170 so i do understand that some people can't feel the difference take a sharpie or a felt tip pen and just make a tiny mark in one corner don't don't do it in the middle of the paper because you won't don't want to waste a piece but do it on one side and then flip it and do it on the other and you'll notice one's dull and one's really bright and that's pro paper obviously is bright on the side that it should be printed on and then you can work out for the rest of the pack where that is and go from there and uh, that's one of the easiest ways i know how to do it it makes a difference so let's get this little beach house in place my favorite coastal currents is beautiful isn't it Alison? really gorgeous right so i've got my little applicator here and i've got my white side little amounts of glue Let's get some adhesion through. Now, what I'm doing with this one, where I've got my little shelf here, where this comes down, I'm only wanting to tuck this a certain way down below it. I don't want to tuck it too far because I want the height from it. I'm going to shunt that over just before my glue does. There we go. And now I can commit to that stick by just pushing down. And there it goes. So you've got that. It's really, really easy to do. Now I've got these here, I've got layers and I can working layers, I can do stuff with that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove my foam tape. And I'm gonna put this side on, there's loads of different ways of playing with this card shape. Don't think this is the only way. There's a ton of ways of making amazing, amazing things with this. So I'm just gonna place this on, making sure it's straight. This might be one of my new favorite card shapes and it is only available on the USB and I find that really tantalizing. But see how this comes together. I love that with their little hands holding. You okay, Miss Tiz says? I've had an idea. You've had an idea? Well, it's more. It's more of a question. Okay. So you see how we just did uh, Ready for White Christmas? Yes. With the scissor lift? Yes. Could you put the scissor lift Yes. Where your foam you could put tapers. your you well you could put a scissor lift here and a scissor lift here and raise them. And so you can and then you could push it flat for postage, which would be amazing. So I'm just gonna put my little deck chairs here. So I've got the distance between the two and I've got the shadow between the two. So you can see how you get that playway coming and it's really pretty. Now I know that glue wise, I can only put a tiny amount, first of all, on that edge and that edge is where it's sort of going over the edge because that's where it's gonna stick. And then that's all I'm gonna use. I don't need more than that. So a little piece and just make sure I'm straight and that I've got them where I want them to be. And then I'm gonna to commit to that stick. See how we have that beautiful depth already. And obviously when the card opens, that will go back. And you can use the backgrounds and you can use the sunset. And that's a really pretty way of playing with it too. So all of these are just little ways of playing. I'm gonna take this from here. And again, on this one, I've added just a little bit extra for a little bit more height. Not much, but it just gives it just a tiny little ump. I want that definition of layer. I want the change. So I'm just going to take this, place it down. I can't lean over, so I don't know if I'm exactly straight, but just to there. Okay. And those deck chairs are just pushed in. Really, really sweet. <laughs> Alison says, oh, Tiz Taz, great idea. Carla, budge up and make room, Miss Tiz Taz. I'm still in my job. I think she'd want I've been telling you for years. <clears throat> That's why I won't eat any food she makes me in case that she's poisoning it to steal my job. So I'm just going to place this on here. Look at this. The theatre performance, right? Isn't that so stunning how that comes together? Carnation's artwork is incredible, isn't it? doesn't matter whether it's a USB, it doesn't matter whether it's a die, look at what we achieve. It's beautiful. Let's bring in some height. So we're gonna bring in those lamps at the side, really pretty. Place it down into this corner point. 
so it sits forward, we're gaining perspective. We're pulling it forward, it's a way it's, it separates. You see how we get the height line going through? So we've got the lamp sitting at the front. Even though the lamp is high, what we actually focus on is the fact that this is further away because we get the diagonal point from here to here. Uh, so we get that to sit backwards so we can go there. And then we've got your beautiful, beautiful beach house sitting at the back. See how we gain the perspective. See how we gain those lines coming through. And it's so blooming pretty, it's unbelievable. And now all I got to do is finish up some extra elements to make it a little bit more full. I actually have to say, I really like that just as it is. I, if it was me personally, would be inclined to leave it that way. I'm somebody who likes to stay clean and stay simple, but lots of us like those fuller cards and it's choice. So I'm going to place this through and I'm going to place it so it just covers that corner edge, but doesn't hang too much over my card. So that's my first point of call little bits of glue here I don't want much just enough to set this about corner to corner place that down isn't that pretty just that little whisper of something and then I'm going to take in my shells I'm not going to shape these out too much if this isn't a detail cut. I will say this is a speed cut. It's not really designed for me to use a ball tool on with a speed cut. If you do a speed cut and you do want to add some shape, it's really important to remember the rules of paper sculpture. Um, it's got no give on the inside of it. So if I do go in right in the center, it's going to crease a lot. If you don't want that to happen, remember we're always going to work on the outside edge and this is still going to crease. It's not going to be as forgiving as normal. So I'm going to with quite a big ball tool here because I know that I'm going to slightly crease it. I Normally speaking, I would have used a detail cut, but I can go around the edge first of all and just give it a little bit of something, something. So don't think that just because it's a speed cut, you can't do more with it. You absolutely can, but we're just careful. So around the edge, I'm not going to touch the middle. I'm just going to go around the edge with my ball tool and just curve out a little bit. OK, so just enough to give it some umph. Then I'm going to take my pin flare, which is a little bit gunked from lunchtime. It gets very warm in the studio, so it dries. So I do apologize. There we go build up your gel glue. Now I've got quite a lot on there. You can see there's quite a height built. And what I'm gonna do, because I've got this edge taken at this side, I need to help with this one. And so I'm gonna use this die very purposefully in this corner, shaping out. And I'm just balancing, okay? So now we have a shift in balance and our focus goes back to the center of the card because we've got the two elements at either side taking care of the central focus. So it allows it to just work in. But I need something else, can't just leave it like that. So now this is a detail cut, I can use this to just shape in a little bit and I'm just gonna follow those diagonals for each shell point. And then where the top one is, I'm just gonna come in and bring it round. We've still got all of those cut lines, so it's just as forgiving as a die. But now, because of that, I can literally separate each one, and each one is entirely bulbous. Really cute. So I'm gonna put some extra pin flare on here. Just making sure I'm only putting the pin flare on the larger surface area of the top and not at the point, because that's gonna get tucked behind this shell, just sitting down the edge, rising up, but I can't, again, leave it like that because now, now it looks weird. I've got to have something going this way. You've got to create your L. So I'll come in with this one. Pin flare here. I love this conch shell. The shells are beautiful in coastal currents. And place that in. So I've created my corner. Pretty as a picture, right? Now, I'm now not balanced. <laughs> Always causing myself problems by adding balance at one side, not the other. We do need to balance things out because visually it's just prettier. That was Miss Taz. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just add something to the other side because there's a lot going on here. And I want something here. I've still got white space. I don't need to worry about that. But what I can do is add this cheeky little chap in. So we're gonna take the ball tool, work around, onto his noggin, down his beak, 
on his tummy and just leave him where he is. Pull his tail out, pull his head forward as we normally do, pull his legs so that his tummy is bulbous. And that's where my sticking point's gonna be. See how his feet, <laughs> so that's a long line there and I'm just gonna make sure he's grounded. So just making sure he's at the bottom of that lamp post. I think that's a really pretty card. I think the dimension, the really joyful, joyful sets of layers that we've got going through that allow height, dimension, and that change in the way that we see the picture. Suddenly we created a box card, but it is a box. It's truly cute, truly beautiful, and just something very different to see. Can you see the dimension there? Now, I'll go out on a limb here and say, does it matter if it's a die or a USB? It's what you do with it. It's always what you do with it. Does it matter? No. It's what you choose to do with it. We can create the whole point of it. It doesn't matter whether you're making a card with a die. My granddad always used to say, it's a bad workman who blames his tools. And I think that's incredibly true when we talk about cutting machines, this, this um, kind of myth that comes along, oh, it's not the same as a die. It's not meant to be the same as a die. It's meant to be what you want it to be. And that's the point, isn't it? When we've got something like the scan and cut, it's just so easy to create because your imagination, it's like opening a book where you get to choose how the chapters run. And that is the really, really beautiful power of carnation. Um, just to answer, so we've got, what does it measure, please? The height of the card, Suzanne, let me check for you. So that is, well, I'll go from here. Hey, oh. Do you know, Carla, put your glasses on because if you can see what you're doing, it really helps. Right, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way, Miss Taz. You need to keep me on check. It's just seven and a half inches by six, five and a half. Seven, it's seven and a half by five. That was a long way round. Sorry, it's seven and a half by five and a half. Miss Tiz Taz is shaking her head at me. It's not my fault. Right. I'm just going to leave that to just destroy itself. I am going to let you all go. Um, I hope you found some value in the demos today and I hope you are able to follow along. If you're into minds as to whether you want to get a scan and cut machine and you're thinking about it but you don't know whether you'd like USBs or whether, you know, you wouldn't. I've had them, I know how frustrating it is to learn stuff, I do, but I have to say for the scan and cut, it's one of the easiest learning curves and it makes it really fun to do when it's carnation because you're already familiar with carnation. And because you're familiar with that, it makes it less daunting when you're doing this because half of it you already know. You know what a vignette is and you know that you need to print it and you, then we know you need to cut it. The only difference is we're using a blade instead of using a die. So. I hope you all have a really wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Yes, Miss Tiz Taz? Can I let them know when we're back? You can let them know when we're back. Okay, so we're on Hobby Maker with Suspended in Beauty on the 31st. So Hobby Maker on Monday. Then on the 2nd and 3rd of August. Are August. We're already in August. We have got full bloom at Hobby Maker. Yeah. And then on Friday, the 4th of August, we have another expansion pack here. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, I know what it is as well. Beautiful garden. It's ace. You're going to love it. And then I would suggest everybody putting this into their diary. We have a new launch on the 7th of August. With Davey B. With Davey I was B. talking to him about it the other day. Yeah. So we will be back with Davey B very, very soon. Please do come and join us for all of those. Massive thank you for all your support recently. I've really, really appreciated it. I love having you here um, and thank you so, so much. So I will see you all next week on Hobby Maker on Monday and until then, take care. Bye.